everybody it's Michelle and I've got more Arteza markers to show you guys today I'm so excited these are the watercolor real brush pens and they are now also available in that travel bundle with this wonderful case just like the one I showed you guys before with the alcohol markers in it but this one has the slots sized to fit the real brush pens and it comes with 96 real brush markers so I'm going to take this package in off and show you guys this wonderful set I'm so excited about getting this set I wanted to show you guys not only because of the travel case and everything but also I have been working more and more with the real brush pens and learned a little bit more about how to work with them and I'll go over some of that with you guys so we've got the long strap again just like on the other one I showed you guys and the clips with the velcro closure and again you can see all of your markers in there we've got 96 and we've got a slot in the top here and it comes with a water pen and that's so you can just put water in there to help thin out and give a more watery watercolor look and we've got the velcro sides again so that we can open it out and flip through the pages of markers these are wonderful and as you can tell these are smaller slots and it holds more I think it holds a hundred and eight so you've got your 96 markers plus 12 empty slots and just like the other case this middle section does velcro out as well so you can take that and use it separately if you want to so versatile I just absolutely love this case and the color options are wonderful you've got so many color options if you can see the ends there just to get an idea of how many like fleshy tones here yellows oranges into some corals and burgundies almost brown colors then over here we've got reds pinks and purples flip the page more purples into blue lighter blues right on into green and look how many different color tones you've got deeper greens into the browns over here we've got grays and blacks so just about any color you could dream of is in there and these blend together so well that you're probably going to be able to create even more colors than what you've got here okay so I have filled my water pen with water from the sink which just unscrews right here so that you can fill this portion here and screw it back on this one is a little different it screws in the reverse direction so that was a little unexpected and then just take the cap off there and you've got your brush I've stamped out some flower images here that I'm going to color for you guys these are images from the Simon Says Stamp Delicate Flowers stamp set that came in the May 2019 card kit. And I apologize, I never got to do a video with that kit doing a card project, but I'm going to use the images here, for example, with my Arteza markers. So I told you guys that I had been playing around with the watercolor markers and I've learned a lot about them. One of the things that I have learned that to greatly greatly improve the performance of these you need to use smooth cardstock I've been using the Strathmore Bristol smooth cardstock and it works wonderfully these colors just flow so loosely on the surface of this smooth cardstock and you will not believe how much of a difference it makes you can take these same markers on a different cardstock and they're not going to perform as well if they soak in immediately into the cardstock then you're not going to have time to move it around before it does. This is so smooth that it moves around on the surface and gives you plenty of time to blend and get exactly what you want before that sets on you. Okay, so we're going to color some of these images. And I've chosen a few color families here. 
and there are so many to choose from in the set you guys you can get a yellowy green an army green a bright green a dark green I mean there is just the full spectrum of every color family that you want to choose from so I just chose some that I was kind of fond of to show you guys today I've got acid green which is a very yellowy green for highlighted areas in my leaves and for my medium green I chose pea green and olive green for my darkest and something else that I have learned about these markers is whereas with alcohol markers I like to go from light to medium to dark back to medium back to light and kind of do the blending like that you don't have to go forward and back through your lights and darks like that I've found that I like to start with my dark and then work toward medium and then light the light blends everything out and that's all you need so I'm going to start with my darkest one and with your darkest one you don't want to put much you just want a little bit because I have learned that this dark color goes very very far so you can see that I'm just coloring a little bit of my leaf there at the bottom I'll go ahead and complete this one leaf to show you guys so now I'm going in with my pea green and you see how it just pulls that olive green into it And then I'm going to blend that all out with my acid green. And that just pulls that color in. And you can blend it the whole way. And look how it pulls all that color. As far as you want to pull it, you can. And you can see that I really didn't end up with anywhere that was as light as that acid green started out to be because I pulled the dark into it and see how wonderfully that blends I just love that I'll show you guys another option I'm going to lay down my dark again just like I did before and then I'm going to come in with my medium and pull that dark out just a little and if you want a lighter overall leaf, don't pull from the dark and medium as much as I did here. Start at the tip and work back toward the dark and push into it rather than pulling out. And you can see, just kind of wiggle over that transition area to get them to blend. And I was careful at the tip to not pull any of my darks into that but to work back toward my dark and I've got a lighter leaf overall there as you can see that dark color even when you put just a little bit it moves and pulls completely into that light if you're not careful so I just use barely just a hint of my dark and medium and then work the rest with my lightest color so working from the tip if I want an overall lighter leaf color and just work in toward it until that starts to blend and look what a beautiful blend you guys so there I've got a lighter leaf overall and see how that color moves so freely on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. Since I have discovered this, I have absolutely fallen right back in love with these markers. I loved them to start with, but they are so much better now. They are just absolutely flawless and they move so beautifully on this cardstock.
for a few minutes. Give that time to dry before you color right up next to it with another color because you may pick up some on your brush. So I'm going to skip and start on this flower a little bit and I'll be using my red family. And for that I chose Current Red for my dark, Rouge Pink for my medium, and Pale Peach for my light, which is almost a skin tone. It's very, very light. But as you saw here, you pull that other color into that, and that's going to be a good tone for doing that and give us a very light pink section. So I'm going to start out with one petal here in the middle. I'm just going to put my dark color down at the innermost part of that petal. And then my medium color and pull that out. And if you want, you can just scribble them together to work that transition area. And then I'm going to take my pale peach and I'm going to come back into the color and pull it out with my pale peach. kind of push it back into the dark if you want to in some of the areas to get a lighter look. Come back in with the dark. Like right over here I want to darken up this side so that it'll look like it's kind of the bottom side of the petal and then just blend that out with my lighter color. And I think that is so pretty. It gives sort of a coral, orangey, red kind of color because of where we're adding in that peach. You guys may want to use these on a watercolor paper and that's okay too but like I said I did find that they blend so much easier on this Bristol Smooth cardstock but on the Bristol Smooth cardstock I try not to add much water because it's not watercolor paper it's not made for a lot of water so I just use the markers and blend them with each other and I do use some water sometimes for some blending but not much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to color my bud here. And I'm going to do that in yellows. And for my yellow family, I chose Acid Yellow. Again, a very light yellow. For my medium is Bumblebee Yellow. And then I have Sunset Yellow, which is kind of maybe a little bit of brown to it. So that would be good for the shading areas. So I'm going to come in with my darkest for my shading areas and I just want to put it very lightly because as we learned the darker color goes far and I'm just going to get it in those areas that would be shaded. And then I'm going to come in with my medium 
and just blend the edge of that and now for my lighter yellow and I want to keep it kind of light so I'm going to try to push back into the dark rather than pull in from it so that that dark color remains just a shading area, not really the color of my flower. some yellow colors to the center of my red one and I think I'm going to bring in my black also and just do some little dots and that color was still wet when I went in, so it will blend into it a little bit, which is fine. If you want very crisp black dots, wait until the yellow has dried. It blends out and flows a little bit, but yet you can still the yellow just vaguely behind that. And now I'm going to try a purple, and I've got for my dark orchid purple. My medium is Wisteria Purple, and my light is Lavender. You guys love the blending these markers give on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. Look at that purple. That is gorgeous, you guys. That's my favorite one so far. Okay, so this one we're going to do orange. And I know that our red turned out kind of orange toned, but it's more of an orangey red. And this one's just going to be orange. So for my light, I've got Flamingo Pink. And you can see, even though it says pink, it is a very orange color. Cadmium orange, that's my middle tone. And for my darker one, I chose more of an orangey brown for those shaded areas. And that is called Autumn Red.
I tell you, I've never found anything that blends this well. I just love these markers. And I'll have the link in the description below for you guys so you can go and get this set of markers for yourself. And I'll have a link for that Bristol Smooth cardstock as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a like over on my Facebook page. And be sure to join our Facebook group, Crafty Minds. Also, follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. And don't forget to visit my blog. I'll have the links to those in the description as well. So be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.